Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. How you doing? This is Dr. James C. Birdsong Jr., founder, president, and executive director of Birdsong Association of Arcasting and Arts Incorporated, known as BABA. And welcome to the 2022 first annual Mentors of Performing Arts and Broadcasters Virtual Conference. This uh, discussion today is uh, actors and filmmakers. Uh, this discussion is what's scheduled to be moderated by Ava Coleman, but we're going to go ahead and proceed with this discussion. So I'm going to introduce our panelists at this time for this conference. We have uh, actor and filmmaker Eric Bendros, actor Marcus Murphy, actors and filmmaker Cassandra Gani, and actress Cassandra Hollins. Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today for this conference. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Glad yes. To Thank you so much. The purpose of this conference is how we could prepare today's youth as voices in arts and broadcasting. So on behalf of the administration and board members of this organization, thank you so much for taking the time out of your schedule to help us with this affordative conference. We really appreciate it so much. So we're going to go into it right now. And each of you have five minutes to uh, to respond due to the time. And I would like to uh, I would like to apologize to the audience and viewers. We were supposed to start at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, but we were running a little late. But we are here now. So um, I'm going to moderate this conference to and ask the questions to our distinguished panelists who have experience in the industry and as in acting and filmmaking. And again, uh, you have five minutes to uh, to answer uh, each question. Okay, here we go. The first question is, can each of you explain to our youth about your beginnings as actors and filmmakers? Who wants to start first? I can go. So um, I started my career actually as a print model first. I was a freshman in college. Hiram College at the time in 2012. And when I should be doing my work, I was I'm looking at candy call. And I came across this print ad at the time it was for HIV awareness. And I tried to find work that be community based like, relate to it some short, even though I may not have gone through it, but I can just relate to it. And um went to the casting call. When I got there, it was um for a different genre called K2, which is that initially it wasn't like a candidate for the um that opportunity led to acting it was on the bus DC where in New York and they opened the doors for acting. Um that same year I was able to meet um um Kelsey Harley who also trained like Gerard P. Henson, Laura film like through the eyes of the children that was on DC TV. And then able to continue to make great things in movie western like man split star in New Jersey. and we own this city for a short film called The Diary of a Changed Man um, as it pertains to a book based off the writer Marlon Reed. Um, that was cool because won his first international award. Um, so, yeah, that's really it for me. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Marcus. Uh, Eric? Yeah, so my journey started off with passion. Um, actually, as a little kid, I always knew I, I was creative. I was a creative and I wanted to be the next Michael Jackson. So um, while that didn't happen, uh, you know, I did have a voice and I began singing. Um, I discovered another passion of mine, which was acting. And I, I felt like I did that better. So, uh, but all of the experiences I've had played a role in um, the, the future accomplishments that I would achieve. So, uh, you know, I, it was just about grinding. It was just about 
even before Google, you know, it's about if you want it bad enough, you'll research, you'll you'll do whatever you have to do, of course, within reason, um, to get there. And that's what I did as a youth. Uh, I found myself uh, taking an extra role on Too Fast, Too Furious. And, you know, you show your personality. You, you, you are kind to people and considerate. I got to know just about everyone on the, on the crew. Uh, met Paul Walker. He was ama an amazing person. Mm -hmm. uh, aside from an actor, just an amazing person person and very talented and in this business is about relationships it's about building those relationships so that you can establish yourself so that you can you know it, it's been times where someone remembered me and that's how i got my next opportunity you know you you leave that person with uh, a good feeling a good vibe you know so um, that's part of my story, passion, uh, having a great support system and uh, building those relationships. And I, I just move forward from there. Thank you so, thank you so much, Eric. Uh, Cassandra? Thank you and good afternoon again, Dr. Birdsong and fellow panelists. Uh, just very happy to be here with you. And for me, I think, the start was when I was age three, really. I was introduced to the stage in the backyard of our family home. Uh, I have an older sister, she and her friends started doing these productions and they made me the closer. And I can just remember, I, you know, I would participate in the skit. So I did a little acting and then I would dance and do gymnastics. And I remember the expressions of like the other kids in the neighborhood, because they would play, they would pay like a nickel to come to these productions. My dad would grill hot dogs, and they sold green, I'm not green, <laughs> but grape and orange sodas. And I just remember looking at their facial expressions, and I loved it that I was having, you know, something to do with the joy, and so, and just you know, just the love of the art forms. And so it started for me then, and just connecting it to specifically acting and also some filmmaking. I don't think I shared that with Dr. Birdsong, but I was a filmmaker as well before now transitioning, you know, to primarily acting and dancing. But um, I had all these Barbie dolls and I would act, you know, either with my with me taking on different roles or just me enacting with all of the dolls myself. And I was directing them, I had sets and everything. So it was very, you know, very ingrained in my uh, soul very early. Um, and just transitioning into actually entering the field, it wasn't, you know, sort of what I majored in in college and undergrad, but I interned in television. You know, so I was always connected, always knew it was my passion. And finally, uh, after getting my master's degree in television production at Georgia State University, you know, I formed my own production company. I said, I've got to do this. God is calling me. This is my passion. And so in part, I started with some of the films because I was like, well, you know, I'll make my own films. I don't even have to audition because auditioning was so, <laughs> you know, so daunting for me at that point. And, you know, started films and then got inspired to, you know, just really, uh, use those films as, as an opportunity to glorify God as well as have messages with social impact. And so, you know, it was just strong on the on the filmmaking. And meanwhile, continuing to train in acting and doing local things and in the church. Uh, and then as I evolved, because I produced, directed, and wrote eight uh, really successful films. And I was like, you know what? It's time. Uh, we 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 lost uh, we lost Cassandra. She uh, she she uh, she'll she'll get back on here. Um, we're gonna we're gonna continue on. Cassie, um, uh, um, same question to you. Well, um, I started. I was in elementary school when I started acting. So we used to do plays and stuff at the church. So I was into the plays, but I was 
probably more into dancing more than I was doing the acting. I think the acting for me sort of came sort of easy because mm-hmm. they always calling me for sup, so I was doing it. But um, I got more involved into modeling and um, and and like I said, my main goal was to dance. So um, at thirteen, I became a professional model at thirteen for um, Eileen Ford out of New York. And um, that sort of took me a different direction because I was still doing my dance. I was still going on auditions, five, four and five auditions a day. Um, and I knew what I, I knew what I was looking for and what I wanted. I think acting was like in the background. So, I, you know, if you, you the videos are now coming out, think of that nature. So I knew if I got in a video, I knew how to act. My game was keeping my, my dance stuff together. And so um, by modeling, that took me sort of a different direction, but I took what I had from there and I used it because um, I'm like five, six. So I'm, I am a commercial print model. But I have walked with the best of the chicks on the runway. <laughs> so um, I just kept doing what I needed to do. And I think for me, acting gave me also a way out. Because in high school, I not only was in the band, but you know I was in the chorus. Anything that was performance level, I was in it. And that gave me a chance to express um how i was as a person who i was as a person and the things that was happening with me at home sometimes kids need a different outlet um and in that instead of turning something that was probably negative at home i used it on the stage i used it in my dancing i I used it even in my writing i used it in everything that that was going on with me and um when I came out of modeling, I stayed doing that, but then I slowly got back into acting because projects and stuff were coming up. Um, I had a really good agent, um, and and I, you know, they really say, you know, there's no need you going to get an agent or anybody until you um, are making your your talent is making a ruckus. That's when they'll come knocking at the door for you. <laughs> okay, not you go knocking at the door for them. So I started doing. Um, I think the first two films I actually got in were horror films, which not the way I wanted to go. But when you are trying to be an actor, if you are somewhat of a starving actor and you are blessed to be in certain avenues, and I and I will say this, I was blessed. Um, I, I, I'll tell you this. It takes another person who's made it to see something in you to pull you to where you need to be. And when I talked about dancing and being in videos and things of this nature, um, they were like small time videos. They were nothing big. It didn't get big for me until I went to a Jackson five concert in Washington, DC in the eighties and leaving this concert. I had a girlfriend when we was walking and this little ugly brown van, I don't, I don't know what made me think that Michael might be in it, but I, that's where my mind was. And I was so much of a hustler. I would have my, I'm going, and I'm and just going to tell my age. I had my beta tapes with me. I had my comp cards with me. Or I had, I had everything like the little packages. So if someone come back and say, here it go. It's like, it's like my resume. And we were leaving the concert and back then, at um, where it's now FedEx Stadium, but it was nothing but dirt road. It was nothing like just gravels. It really wasn't a road, you know what I'm saying? And this little brown van, I don't know why I thought it was going to slow down or what, because we seen the Jackson brothers just flying back. Zoom, zoom. And as soon as this van, I don't know, I just started running. I had on heels, I was dragging my girlfriend, she was cussing me out. And when we got there, Michael pops out this the ugly van at the top of it. And I gave it to him. I think it just went in his van. I think I just really threw it at the top because he has a, a sunroof top to it. Um, three months later, I received a phone call from Michael himself 
telling me he watched my tape. He thought I had a lot of potential and he wanted me to come to California and he was going to pay me to get out there. And at first I didn't believe it. I hung the phone up because, you know, we, we didn't have the technology we have today. But I was uh -huh. like, really? <laughs> and he called back. So it was a real thing. And once I got with him and him tutoring me and really showing me some different things and, you know, putting me in the right direction and being in some of his videos, that really blew me up. And then that gave me a chance to figure out, do I want to do acting? Do I, do I want to do dance? Or do I want to mesh all these together? So um, just coming to even in my late, my early 20s, it was doing the films. Anything, I, I would go to all auditions. I do four or five auditions a day. Um, and you have to get used of them saying, no, she's good, but that's not what I'm looking for. She's great, but ain't got the right look. Um, you have to take that with a grain of salt and keep pushing and my goal was to just simply say i'm gonna get one of these auditions a day and normally i did I, that's where my mind frame was and i just kept going this and, mm -hmm. and the more you keep going in this industry you have to figure out where you're going to go mm -hmm. every five or six years you're recreating yourself not to be something else but to be something bigger better um maybe a new talent might come out and even at 58, I'm still doing the same thing. But you know where you're going. And now as a segment producer, um, you really have to work your way up the ladder. I'm a black woman. It is not easy to have that title. It is not easy to have that title with a huge, major um, film conglomerate like DreamWorks or Pixar or Disney. And I've worked with all of them. It's it's not easy to have that. So um, I think all of my stuff come from really trying to express myself, uh, knowing that I had the talent for it, but always consistently working my craft. Even today, I may always be behind the camera a lot, but I'm still doing film work in front of the camera. Um, you have to always be consistent. And that's what mm -hmm. I've learned about being in this industry is being consistent, being humble, because you're going to run into some rough, rough stuff. And I, I have, and knowing who is going to appreciate your work and who's not. But the best person to appreciate your work is you. Mm -hmm. and, then if it's, and then you have to have enough, you have to have no fear to look at your work. And say, okay, this is where I need to clean it up at. This is where I need to do better at. So, thank, uh, thank you so much, everybody. Uh, uh, our moderator Ava Coleman just uh, sent me a text message. She's ready to come on, and she's going to take over this discussion. Our moderator. So, in a few minutes, ladies and gentlemen, she will be coming on here. And once she comes on here, then she will go ahead and take over per, per the instructions from our organization. But as but uh, all of you uh, definitely have a background experience in the industry as actors and filmmakers, and you know this is what this conference is all about. You know we we want our black youth to be successful in this industry, so they need mentors that will help them and co uh, cultivate their skills and so forth. So, um, so, um, yes, yeah, so this is, this is truly is a blessing from God. All, all of you, uh, have a contribution that has been presented on the table in the industry, which you have done, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, Eric, you know, I know what, I, I read your bio and Cassandra, I read your information and Marcus, you know, what you've done and Cassie, what you have done. So this is, this is wonderful. This is truly is wonderful. So, uh, thank you so much, uh, for doing your introductions sharing with with uh the viewers uh about your experience in the entertainment industry from uh actor and the actors or filmmakers discussion so like i said in a few minutes uh ava coleman our moderator will uh, will be on here uh to take over the uh this discussion as as a moderator uh like i said she reached out 
to me just now and and um and, she, and you know told me what was going on so she's gonna be coming on in a few minutes so um um i encourage everybody and those of you who are watching those who's following this and and uh those of you who are following you know the panelists please post your comments on this discussion because you know like i said this is a, this is about and that's not about us this is about our young people being uh, the future actors, actresses, filmmakers, playwrights, anything to do in the acting field and filmmaking field. So again, thank uh, thank you. Thank you all so much for uh, answering the call to action for our organization regarding uh, this uh, this effort. And, um, and I just want to share with the public, the reason why we're doing this conference is because this is a tool that we are doing to reach the young people and to a broader audience as well. And I forgot to announce that um, we've been doing a substantial marketing campaign for this conference. Uh, uh, more than 50 media outlets had uh, announced this conference. Uh, several interviews has been done within the last couple of weeks. And um, and so, and people been uh, posting and reposting on their social media accounts about the conference, encouraging the public, especially our young people to come on and to engage with this informative discussion. So again, thank you, thank you all so much. Thank you all so much. I really, really, truly, truly appreciate it. So again, uh, we're waiting for uh, Cassie, uh, our moderator, to come on here in a few minutes. So once she comes on here, then we will we will continue, um, you know, with this discussion. Uh, James, so, yes, sir. Can I just add something right quick? Go ahead, Eric. Yeah. So um, before I forget. Uh, another bit of advice, which is kind of piggybacking on what everyone was saying, was that uh, be willing to pivot because when you have laser sharp focus, which is good to have, you have your goal in mind and you're going after that. Know that things will come along the way, like Cassie talked about all that rejection, and it'll start to knock away at sometimes your self-esteem and you begin to question yourself. But then when other opportunities come up that may not quite be exactly what you're looking for, it could position you to get to where you're uh, you're looking to go. So and I say that because um, when I was in California, Vegas and New York, it, you know, doing different roles and in, in reality TV and then some narrative film work and you get told Hey, look! Don't do so much reality TV. That's gonna, you know, work against you with the, you know, the film work that you're trying to do. Um, it gets to a point where you're like, hey, like Cassandra said, look, let me start producing my own work. <laughs> then that way nobody can tell me no. And that's what led me to uh, filmmaking and stuff. So. The point of what I'm saying now, just be willing to pivot. And it's good to have that razor sharp focus, but at the same time, be open, you know, and, and, and build your network that way. Yeah, I agree. And, yeah. then, and on to that, not everything you said, but to what you said is that, you know, colorism is real, too. You know, I've been in a position where, like, they would tell you, I think you're talented but you're not light enough or they give you the job <laughs> and then they go back and we cash and you'd be like, you know, so you had to be mindful of that. And that doesn't mean that you're a bad looking individual or you're not talented enough or your skin is a bad thing. But like, um, Cassie was saying is that they know what they want. And it's not to say, you know, and don't, and don't put in your mind that, Oh, I'm not good enough or they don't want me to try to get this plastic surgery because that's going to fade out. But your natural yeah. self, your personality, like you said, Eric, and being in spaces like you have been on would definitely give you the opportunity. And every opportunity not for you, too. I had to learn that as well. Um, yes. Opportunity isn't for you. And it's okay to be told no. And then also having, like, a, a small group of friends because it can be friends in your industry that might be mad that you get more work than them. And they try to be shady and you got an attitude with you. And you be thinking, well, what did I do? So, and that can also play with your psyche too, because you're already dealing with so much from the industry itself with your peers and directors and producers. And then you might want to quit. So you have to be mindful of who you are and, and what you bring to the table and don't change or, or fold because you think this is right now. Because mm -hmm. right now may not all be right now. It might take years to get yeah. to it. Go for your end goal, but if you are authentic 
and you really have courage. You can't buy courage. I will say that courage is authentic, and you have to have that because if you are willing to do anything, then it can stop your career before it gets started. So exactly, oh, that's good stuff. Yeah, exactly. Thank, thank you yeah. so much, uh, Eric and Marcus, for providing um, your thoughts on this. Uh, as we are waiting for our moderator, uh, the next question I'm going to ask uh, our panelists for the Actors for Makers discussion is, how can young, aspiring actors and filmmakers tend to see in the motion picture industry? And each of you have five minutes to respond. And I, I'm going to start with you again, Eric. Um, grit. Uh, we've we've touched on it thus far with speaking. Uh, it's grit, perseverance. I mean, don't let anybody tell you no, and you just accept that. You know, as far as receiving a no from an audition, it is what it is. That's just it. But that can't, you know, have you to say, "Hey, I'm done." Not if you really want this. If it's really in you, like <laughs> it's been times where I tried. I I, I said, Lord, I, I'm just done because I was getting rejection after rejection. And we we talked about colorism. We touched we touched on that. Also, being a heavier size mm -hmm. uh, in this industry. Well, now things are changing. Thank goodness. I, I feel like I was ahead of my time, but. You know, shout out to Lizzo and others. So, and a lot of people will say, and I, I'm, I'm kind of going off here, but um, I'm gonna bring it back. A lot of people will say, well, hey, there were a lot of uh, plus size and big and tall actors and what have you. But for me, I didn't want to be the butt of the joke. Back in the day, that's, you know, if you saw a plus size actor in a lead role or a principal role, it was, you know, because they were the butt of the joke or, or what have you. Now things are, are changing, you know, we don't have to explain why this actor is heavier or what have you, because we have people in society who are heavy and nobody has to explain that. So anyhow, um, I found myself coming up against that, but still, I would still be on my grind. I'm still printing out headshots back then before everything went <laughs> digital. Uh, I'm still sending everything that I need to send what the casting director wants. And then sometimes you'll get to that third uh, callback and it's still a no. But then that one time where you get that yes and it changes your life. Like when I was on this true crime television show, um, uh, I almost got away with it. And I had a principal role. I was playing an officer and I did that well. And it led to the next opportunity. So that's just the thing. Just as you're about to give up that one opportunity, you're, you're just one opportunity away from changing your whole life. It could be just that, that last opportunity that, that you leave on the table that will set you apart. And, and as Cassie said, blow you up. You know what I'm saying? Thank you so much, Eric. Uh, that that is that is so true, Cassandra. Uh, yes. Uh, great comments. I wonder, Dr. Birdsong, could you repeat the question? And maybe it's some of my technical difficulties, but I I think I missed part of the question. Sure. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to present this question again to the panelists. Well, Eric already answered it, but I'm going to present it again. The question is, how can young, aspiring actors and filmmakers can succeed in the motion picture industry? And uh, each of you have five minutes to respond to that. Well, Eric already did his. Now uh, we uh, you and we're going to go, go, go on the list. OK, I, I believe in training. So I think, you know, as soon as uh, a young person thinks that they are interested in acting or filmmaking to begin, you know, training in the classics. And uh, now so many schools have wonderful programs, uh, certainly for, you know, any child who wants to act, uh, audition for school plays, you know, or uh, like 
we did or, or really like my older sister and, and her friends did because I was just three at the time, you know, set up some productions in your neighborhood or, you know, there's community theater uh, and just really develop the craft, the craft of acting, um, train in filmmaking. I work at the Georgia Film Academy where we are training students in the below the line craft, but they are prepared when the opportunity comes, they are ready to go right on to set, set, and the same for any filmmaker, directing, producing, writing, uh, study the foundation and, and develop that, develop your craft. And, you know, so when, when the opportunity comes, then you're able to, to really take advantage and soar with those opportunities because you're, you're prepared. Thank you so much, Cassandra. Marcus? Um, I always ask myself, well, I can be to any. Why? Why are you doing it? Are you doing it for the money? Are you doing it for the fame? Or are you really doing it because you really want to express your art in any way to connect to anyone in some shape or form? And I always ask myself that too. So that's the first part. One way you should be able to succeed. But then, like Cassandra said, is that take your classes for sure because. It is a tough business. Um, make sure that you're not just working to your work active, but the roles that you are choosing really can have a purpose and a connection. Um, one thing Eric did mention that I agree on, you know, um, is when it came to like different like weight or images, now you can see different things. Cause I'm only 28. And even as I was growing up, you might have seen black people on TV, but certain things they portray is not realistic. And now we in an era now where, again, how you are perceived or um, the con different connotations as far as they want everyone in one, in one group. I'm not that you can't do for and do your personal life, but film is forever. So when you have young boys and young girls that look up, up to us as artists in any genre, filmmaking, acting, directing, and you might put this particular individual on the screen where they're young, so then you might mess with their psyche too. So you have to make sure the images that you that you write, I'm not saying to be all on one uh, opportunity or chance, but it, it's more than just us in this moment. It's about the, the generation behind us and the beings behind them as well. But I always look at Sidney Poitier as one of my greatest heroes because he was so with me. You know, but, but as a black man, um, like my father, um, he showed me what it is to take a leading role, how it, what it means to say no to opportunities. Um, you just know your, your character. Like, again, just because you may have an opportunity, you don't have to. It's okay to say no. It's true. Foundation of Hollywood, too, because everybody want to be a Hollywood star, but once you get there, it may not be all cracked up to what you wanted it to be, and then you're going to end up to where you once was, which was with probably nothing, no money, and all these mental illness, illnesses. So you just have to really just be cautious and mindful of the things that you pray for, I would say, to succeed. Um, don't get your counterpart success and think it's going to be your success because you don't know their journey. Um, we all have a different journey that we have to take on. And then lastly, I would say is that have to for you is for you. I know that sounds cliche, but maybe if you want to be an actor, maybe that's not your thing. Maybe writing and producing is your thing. And it's more power that I'm learning now at 28 behind the camera with your words compared to going out for an audition because they already have in their mind, like um, Cassie and Eric was mentioning. But the power is behind the screen um, and the writing and the connections that you make. So just be mindful of that and um, work hard. Have faith. Thank you so much, Marcus. Uh, Cassie? You did. I believe you're muted. I believe she's muted. Mm -hmm. Can y'all hear me now? Okay. We can. <laughs> yeah, same, same question, Cassie. Okay. Um, I just had a person the other day to come in my inbox and ask me, how can I, you know, can, can you put me in one of your films? And um, that's not the first time I've asked that because once they see, oh, okay, well, she can put me in one of the films or I'm writing some, I've been writing something for a long time. Um, can you, can you get this in? Um, and I think 
first of all, we have to be realistic. Um, this isn't an easy industry to get into. Um, it's even rougher when you are a person of color or you are black. And um, truth has to be truth. When Eric spoke about the size, for years, there have been our white counterparts who were big people having their own shows on TV. But when it got to us, that was the excuse. No, we don't want y'all. Mm -mm. You too big. You too this. Those were excuses. Instead of seeing us as gifted, talented performers, like anybody else would, you know, would see us. And so um, you have people today come in and say, oh, how can I get in one of your movies? I have to go back and ask, have you had any kind of acting training? Have you ever acted? What have you done? Because if it's not an independent movie, you don't really have to have a SAG card to do independent work. But if you're talking about SAG after work, you better have that gold card. If you ain't got that gold card, you ain't getting in there. There's some work that has to be done. And there's some things that have to be done. You know, um, you're paid by, you know, if you got a back shot, if you have a frontal shot, that depends on how much you get or you might get or how many lines you may have it's it's a it's a lot of stuff with this so when people come and say you know how can i get in you know how can i get in i, I will tell you straight up first of all is this something you really and truly want to do forget the fame because we have actors who have been acting forever and you don't realize it until they die so when tmz comes on oh so and so died you're like Oh, that was so-and-so from so-and-so. And they never probably really got their just do, but they're still considered celebrities, so to speak. Do your do your due diligence. Um, it's not cool to just ask, oh, how can I get in? No, you got to do your work. You got to pay your dues. Um, and your dues may be different from mine. Um, go on to auditions. Don't stop. Just cuss a casting director, say, oh, go go to another one. If it's a play that happens every year, go and you don't get it the first two years, keep going. One of my friends who was in The Walking Dead, uh, they call him Oscar, <laughs> one of my buddies, he didn't start acting early. Dude worked in the a car plant and then he became like a, a manager for um champions and all of a sudden he went to a play one day and he decided hey i, I could do that and he went to audition and that's how he got started off was going to auditions of course he did go and take classes and stuff like that because you you want to dedicate yourself to doing this you got to do some things take some classes um get some training in understand what acting is about are you a method actor are you you know there's so many different um realms of acting you have to figure out which one it is acting on stage is most definitely different from acting on film you know uh, going to broadway you got to have a sad card to go to broadway you can't just jump on broadway we have some people who say oh i'm going to broadway but you don't have the credentials for it so when people come and ask you things, so how can I get into this movie? How can I get, you gotta go audition. Find out what it what it what it's asking for in the audition. If they're looking for newcomers, new people, that means people who don't have nothing, no sad card, because they ain't got no hours in, they ain't got no work in. That would probably be perfect for you. Get in there and see what it's about. It's not easy. Film work is harder than stage work. Some people may say, oh, no, it's not. Ah, yes, it is. When you get to <laughs> and got to do it all over again, the same line, the same line. <laughs> it's a little harder. So you got to figure out what it really is you want to do. Is this what you, is this for you? If this is not for you, try to stay and see how that works for you. If that's not for you and you rather do them work, get ready. 
because you ain't going to have no regular nine to five job or eight to five or seven to three because I ain't never had one of those. So you have to figure out what you want to do and you got to put the work in. The work means getting the training in. I started in high school with, with a drama teacher that actually I was taught the Stanislavski version of acting, which is method, methodology acting. I'm a, I'm a methodology actor. So you have to immerse yourself. If I if if I do a character and you don't see Cassie, I did my job. But those are things you have to work at. So I get the questions. Oh, well, you're in. Can you put me in a movie? What have you done? I don't know you. If I if I bring you the dream work, say, okay, go ahead and do this here. And then you ain't good. You just messed up my reputation. Just saying. <laughs> Thank, thank you so much, Cassie. Uh, that is so, uh, what you are sharing about uh, the question, uh, how our young people in the black community can see as actors and filmmakers, it is so true and on point. Uh, that is so true. And again, I'm encouraging all uh, everybody who's watching to post your comments and post your questions to the panelists. Uh, the next, we're gonna go on. The next question is, can you explain the importance of having a mentor as an aspiring young actor and filmmaker? And each of you have five minutes. And uh, I'm going to start with you, Cassie. Um, I think the best way as a mentor to um, try to help a younger person out or anyone for that matter is trying to get into um, this business is looking at their talent. You don't never, ever dis disregard anyone's talent. Maybe they sing better than they act. That doesn't mean you still can't be an actor. You could probably go into opera and act in opera. Um, I think that you have to nurture them. You have to put them on the right track. You have to say, okay, tell me what type of acting would you like? Are you more comedic? Are you more drama? You know, are you thriller? You know, do you want to do, you know, horror films? Figure out what genre you would like to be a part of. Once you sort of figure that out, or either try all of them and see which one works for you, I would say, okay, let me sit down. Let's sit down with some people that I that I may know that are in comedy and let them tell you what it is about comedy because comedy is about really it's about a person who who's had some rough times at home and they bring it out on stage just in a comedic way but it resonates with the audience because pretty much everybody in the audience done went through it or you going through it right now so as a mentor that's what i would do this this is just me that I would take you by the hand and say, okay, let's sit down. Let's see where you at. Let's see what you got. And then let's, let's capitalize on that. If you need training here, public speaking is the number one key to really being a real good actor or anything else. If you get public speaking down, you can go anywhere. And that would be the, the first thing you would need to know. It's getting that public speaking in because public speaking will help you be encouraged. It'll take the fear away. It'll, it'll give you that confidence that you need when you stand up there and talk or when you stand up there and read your lines. It, it'll give you some, some thoughts, some food that you can that you can grasp on and say, okay, I got this. Let me go ahead and do what I got to do. So I think for me, that's how I would mentor a person that, that want to be in here and try what see what this business has to offer them but on the on the real tip i'm gonna always be honest because um times has changed now you parent has to be in the studio or on set with that child it's not like it used to be um and i know back in the day with my older son i had people telling me oh you can't come i was like oh you crazy because i'm coming you ain't going to have me sitting outside the door. <laughs> so now, you know, um, I think it's an education. I think it's a thing of you mentoring them and making sure that they know what's, what's this, what's right, how to go about 
getting this? What do you need to do as an as an actor? Don't look at yourself as a child star because you're not there yet. This is about really putting in the work. This is a job. Just like if you will go to work at McDonald's somewhere. This is a job. So that means if you're going to go to an audition, show up on time. I'd rather for you to be there um, five to 15 minutes early than for you to be 15 or five or two minutes late. Because if you're late, you're not getting in. These are things that you have to let them know. You can't be late. You got to be serious about this. You got to be on time. You got to be trustworthy. You got to have the credibility that if they put you in something, once you've gotten it, then you have to show up. You got to show up and show out. You got to put out. You can't just sit here. And, and I think it's a way that you can sit and talk to kids. I love kids. So you can sit and talk to them and say, hey, this is what you have to do. And then if they don't get it, don't beat them up. Just say, okay. There, uh, do you know how much stuff is out here? You can go be a background actor just like that and still get paid if that's what you're looking for to get paid. But you have to really figure out, okay, if I'm a background actor, what can I do to stand out? You don't have to say anything. I said two words and got blowed up. Okay, just the way I said it. The look on my face and how I said it pretty much. There, there are things that you can do. And so you have to mentor them in that way and let them also know, I always say, express who you are. Don't never change nothing about you. Don't let this business change you. You're being an actor. You're in a role, a character for a few hours and then you get to go home. Keep those two separate. But if you have some experiences Bring those experiences within your character. Say if you need to cry, think about something that's, that really devastated you, that caused you to cry. Pull that in to that. Pull that in to that, to that role if that's what you need to do. You need to be sad. Or think about something that was really funny or comedic that made you really laugh. Pull that in. But all the time, be humming in on the exact talent that you have. And then me, it's just as a mentor, it's just me helping to guide them and lead them the correct way. Thank you so much, Cassie. Uh, uh, Marcus, same question. Yeah. Um, for mentorship, you know, for me, it's always about the energy that you have before you work with somebody else because you never want to take someone under your wing if you know it's not going to have a longevity with them or even a short time with them um and i met my mentor who happened at the time to happen to be my acting coach his name was kelsey carley you know i met him when i was 17 you know in high school and i was at an event um doing pantomime for the first time ever in my life and i was just speaking as a teenager oh i think this is cool i want to do acting but he took what I said as a joke. He's like, no, I was really paying attention to you, and I want to take you under my wing. Then at the time, I didn't know about his success stories or having his own studio or working at Howard University, working with your R.G.P. Henson and a late Chad with Bargeman. None of that was my concern. Even if I did know that, it still wouldn't have been my concern because I wouldn't have worked with him based off the people who he had helped make stars, if that makes sense. Um, but one thing he always told me, um, even up to this point, is that when you do work, you do your, your work because you love the craft, not for the money or the fame, because those things would come. And at 28, he told me that I was 17, that's always stuck with me. Um, but another thing that I think was really good about mentorship is that when you do feel down in this industry, because you can't feel down, not just so much about the politics of things, but even with your personal life and you feel like your world is crumbling, you need that outlet from someone who's been in the game a lot longer than you, um, who has probably been through way worse things than you were when they was coming up in that era, like the 50s and the 60s. So they giving you their experience, but then they also able to connect it with what you're going through. And the thing about it, even though things are changing in the industry, um, it's still a long way to go. Like, you know, it's a long way to go. Like, you know, like you might see different, you know, gen, um, yeah, like individuals or people bringing things to the table. But again, like I mentioned before, racism is still there. So as an 18 year old want to come into the industry at the time as a model, and I'm saying like, oh, you know, you're dark, 
but I think you're this, that can play with your psyche because then you thinking as a at an adolescent age, well, should I change my skin? Should I be different? What do they want from me? And you never want those things. So having a mentor um, in this industry particularly is really just knowing that they've been through what you've gone through. Maybe not um, what you're going through may not be as extensive as what they went through, but you listen to what they have to say, though, because you can incorporate it for your generation, and then you can incorporate it for the ones coming behind you. Um, and then I think I like working with older people, having older people as my mentor. It's not so much people in my age bracket. Not to say I don't like the age people in my bracket, but it's the wisdom that I go for. Like my parents are older, so it's the wisdom that I look for. Um, and working with Kelsey Carly allowed me the opportunity to meet um, Vaughn and Smokey Stevens, who happened to be one of the scarecrows in the Wiz. And, you know, getting invited to his birthday parties and just the wisdom, being on stage with Lucille Ball at that time. You know, like I said, I like working and being around older people. And maybe I'm an old soul too, I don't know. But if I didn't have those individuals, the men and the women in my in my, in my my journey as an actor, I really think I'd be on the deep end um, in a way where I wouldn't be able to make the decisions cognitive-wise without the mentorship. Yes, I had my family, but my family is in the industry. They do... Um, you know, they entrepreneurs, they um, government workers. So as an artist, my, as myself, they can relate to me from that standpoint, but have somebody in your field that really know it and, and still out here working and hustling, is it, 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 it gives you that to, um, validation and solidify that you can keep going. Age is your limit. Um, it's always new talent, like Cassie said, coming up, but take what you've gone through and nurture them in the correct way so they don't make the same mistakes or any mistakes at all. Um, and then even with the parents, you know, when they have their kids get into the industry, a lot of reasons could be because of the money, the financial gain. But psychologically, you can really mess your child up. And that's why we see a lot of stars, whether it's Hollywood or even on a local level, you know, crazy and zooted out their mind because they wasn't really, they, they, the love they probably had for it wasn't what the parents' mindset was. So you had to be mindful of a, of a kid, even as a teenager, you know, with your parents, had those tough conversations, you know, let them know, like, look, I don't want to do this, and why do you want me to do this? You know, I remember at one point, I was making so much money, it caused a strange to my family at one time, thinking I'm the bread, wouldn't do what I say, but reality-wise, I was really hurting myself with that mindset, with that ego, because when everything, when the money stopped coming, when the job stopped coming, the ones who I thought I was better than, in my family was the ones that gave me that courage and that strength to get back um, that where I needed to go. So this time around, it's a little better for me than it was years ago. Um, so I say all that to say is have your mentorship in your industry, but don't lose um, value or um, have an ego that can really have people not want to be around you because that's not a good feeling either being alone, particularly in this industry. And don't, and don't look at and this. Is my last thing I will say too is that, Fame and money don't make you happy. It doesn't. Um, like Cassie said, it's a job. And like any job, regardless you a janitor, you a cashier, you be there like 30 minutes early. Because I'd rather be known as a person that's on time than a person that rubbed the wrong elbows or may uh, left a bad taste in somebody's mouth. So when you want to reemerge in, in this industry, or I, they got, even though you change as a person, the last memory they have of you is very distasteful. So you never want to, to be, be that. Thank you so much, Marcus. Uh, Cassandra, same question. Yes, and my apologies. Uh, I'm traveling, as I mentioned before, and you know we get to certain areas and it, it knocks me out. So I apologize in advance. Um, so many great points. I think I missed uh, Eric, but Marcus and Cassie they had great points about mentorship. So I think I'll kind of pick up on like how, excuse me, what someone who is looking for a mentor should sort of um, think about and you know ways to think about it uh it's such a relationship uh, oriented industry uh as we've been talking about and so maybe some of the local film groups and um, maybe some acting organizations in atlanta uh you know most of the we, most of our organizations are kind of film in general related but networking is a great opportunity to get around industry folks. And so, you know, what I would encourage someone to do is, you know, kind of find some individuals who have made some strides that, uh, or 
or on your uh, you know list of goals and objectives and reach out to them and see you know would they consider mentoring you um, because you know as Cassie mentioned this is a business there's so much to understand in terms of you know just your business aspect and acumen do you have your resume together your headshots um, a mentor is a good individual you know outside of you know once you have representation those individuals can help you as well but a mentor is someone who can always be there for you and help you with those sorts of things so I just thought I would kind of you know not knowing what uh, Eric might have already said just wanted to kind of tailor because you know sometimes people wonder well how can I find a mentor uh, you can literally you know now we have social media maybe reach out to some individuals in your area and tell them what your goals are how you admire them and see you know if they would consider mentoring you again film organizations uh, might be acting clubs at your school and and just really get creative about who you would like to mentor you think about the reasons why you think that person would be a good mentor for you and um and just find i would say the confidence and the boldness to reach out because you would be amazed at how many of us you know you know we're representative who, who want to help and want to advise so you know i thought i would just kind of tailor my response to how you go about reaching out to someone and consider them as a mentor and see if they would would take you in <laughs> so to speak yeah. thank you so much cassandra eric same question yeah so um i can't speak from a lot of personal experience with mentorship, but I am a proponent of it. And the reason being is regret. You don't want to have that. And what a mentor can and will do for you is point out those pitfalls because they've been through it, right? And so um, actually two people in my life come to mind because mostly I can speak from the um, point of view of having peers and colleagues more so in the industry. But uh, two people come to mind when I did community theater. So that's another resource. Um, the, the director of the African American Cultural Arts Center in Miami, uh, Teddy Harrell, uh, yeah. he really advised me on not just technical aspects, but also personally, you know, that's why I was able to take the nose and why I was able to, and I know I keep being repetitive about this, but it's so important because you're going to have those dark days where you just like, I'm done, you know? And so that mentor is there to, to kind of, to not kind of, to guide you. And it's so crucial. It's so important to have that guidance. You must uh if you want to succeed so a mentor is a very uh key to, very much a key to your success so do i have regrets with not having like a steady mentor throughout my career i wouldn't say regrets but i see where i could have benefited from that it was certain mistakes that i made you know but now i feel like i'm better for it because i can turn around and mentor others you know so everything happens for a reason. Um, just keep at it. But yeah, community theater. And also another individual, when I was in, in Hollywood, Bobby Chance, uh, she's the acting coach to the stars. And um, she was really great with, I don't know, it, it, it just, with your art, you touch people on the inside, I feel like. So she kind of did that for me and that resonated with me. It was like, yeah, acting is technical, you know, the um, method acting, but also there is an element where you have this feeling because that's what we're, that's the goal of a director and a storyteller. You want to move people with what you're putting on the screen. So, um, when you can do that, like Cassie said, I've done my job. When you don't see Eric, but you see the character. So uh, that's another thing to evaluate with a mentor. You know, is this person, what have they done? 
do they move me, you know, and, and, and the way that they, they teach and the way that they uh, mentor me? Is it penetrating on the inside? Because my thing is throughout history, a lot of things have um, a lot of big decisions by power players have been made just by feelings and emotions, you know? So never discount your passion, you know, if that makes sense. Thank you so much, Eric. Uh, um, the next question is, what can be done academically to advocate for programs in our schools, particularly in the inner cities for aspiring young actors and filmmakers? And the current situation of budget cuts and drama in theater. And each of you have five minutes to uh to expound on that. I'm gonna start with you, Marcus. Um, yeah, so I think one way you know you can continue to arts in the in the schools is really having people like us, like we're doing this moderation, coming back to our, you know, stumping grounds in, in a way where we know the hustle, we know the ground, we know the disappointments. So if they look at us as an individual who may came from an inner city like them, and then it's hopeful, but we are showing them hope, come back to your community speaking, you know. Um, and so too, you know, also too, um, doing things your own time. You know, maybe you can't go to the school work with the kids like you may want to because they have so many curriculums. So maybe, you know, meet with the parents, you know, have a group, like a theater group, a local theater group for the kids to be young. So as they continue to expound upon uh, their, their gifts and their craves, they can look back at a, at a Cassie or Eric or a Cassandra or someone or in their communities and say, you know what? They took the time to do this for me. They didn't have to, but they did. And it gave me courage to know that I'm on the right path. So then as they continue their journey, they too would be in a position to give back. Um, I think a lot of people don't think the arts are important. If it's not a nine to five, you know, like a government kind of job. So we always got to keep that in the forefront as well because it's different generations and eras where that was at the forefront. But I think the more vocal, well, we went, but I say, I'll say this, we're in a different space now where you don't even have to really do the things in the school like you want to because you have social media, you have um, your church um, foundation, you have the acting classes. So even if a school may not believe in the importance of an academic, of an academia setting that also important, you have so many avenues. And even, you know, with um, Instagram and TikTok and things, you can do your own skits, you know, get your own feedback. And those little small things can lead to bigger things. And then the more that you um, expound upon those and, be adamant about your craft and you know what you do, then it could bring a conversation to revisit in the schools like, okay, they took initiative. Now let's, you know, jump on board. But they start with one person. You know, one key can open doors for generations um to come. So thank you so much, Marcus. Uh Cassie, uh, same question. Um I think first of all, I think that they have to realize that entertainment, acting, performing is a legitimate job. That's first and foremost, because in a lot of cities and areas and schools, it's just, okay, this is something you want to take while you're in school. It's, it's, an, an, it's an elective class. Um, you want to take this in school and okay, but it's actually a job. And I think until they really realize that it's a job, even let's say someone's on unemployment and you're going down to the um, unemployment center and you're sitting there looking for jobs. I've seen people get put out of the unemployment agency because they were sitting there putting casting jobs in and they had shots and stuff. And I watched a lady tell one person that they had to leave because they weren't looking up jobs. No, it's a job. So until they understand that this is a job and that there should be more grants, there should be more money for it. Because if there was no entertainment, you have to realize this is a billion dollar industry every single day. Entertainment world never, ever sleeps. It is 24-7, 365 days a year. And if we did not have this, 
what kind of entertainment would we have? It wouldn't be nothing on TV. It wouldn't be us going to the movies or anything. So um, until they understand it in the schools, this could be a job for a student one day. We need to nurture them in a different way. Maybe it needs to be an actual class versus to, okay, it's an elective and we have a drama club or a music club. This needs to be an actual class. And then maybe they'll look at it a little differently and then we could get funds in. But also thinking um, we have to be realistic here that for our black students and students of color, it's going to be a little bit rougher for us to get the funds in. So that means we have to find different um, ways and different uh, avenues to go about it in order to put our problems with this at the forefront so we can help our youth so they can be successful and, and start out the starting block with some type of experience and some type of training and education behind it. Thank you so much, Cassidy. Uh, er, um, Eric, same question. So I would say we need to get with our elected officials at the local level, state level, um, even federal, write your congressman. You know, that's how we get things done. Um, yeah, so I, I won't be long on this one because for me, I think it's just that simple. When you, these elected officials, they are there to serve the people. And you have to galvanize, you have to get people involved because we're, you know, there's numbers, there's power. So they're seeing that their constituents want these different programs in schools. They have no other choice but to move. So that's my take on it. Thank you so much, uh, Eric. Uh, Cassandra, uh, Cassandra, same question. Uh, yes, I think uh, the state of Georgia is probably unique in that because the industry, you know, we're like second and first uh, in the country now, uh, first in feature filmmaking, uh, second in overall production outside of Hollywood, and, and you know, New York is third now. I think uh, that's what distinguishes Georgia a bit in terms of. You know, there's so many schools now that have new fine arts departments, new film programs for students uh, on both the elementary and the secondary level. And I'm uh, just very proud of the state from that perspective for rising to the occasion, so to speak, rising to the opportunities that are here now. I mean, you can have a viable career as an actor. The schools recognize that. And so many of the schools have wonderful programs. And so from an academic perspective because that's part of what I do in my day job is you know hire you know trying to get the top of the line you know what are their credentials they have an MFA you know is an MFA in acting you know was it in directing you know what are their concentrations that's who you want to be training your children you know students those are the kinds of um, instructors that you want to be around I I was a part of uh, the Yale Conservatory for Actors which uh, it's a summer edition, uh, kind of uh, the first semester of their MFA in acting at Yale. Very, very competitive, but very intensive. And and so that that kind of, even though I had a foundation, that is now my new foundation. So, you know, from an academic perspective, I would say look for, especially in Georgia. You know, I know in other cities, I think you all have addressed that well. But in Georgia, look, you know, for those areas where those schools are now getting really competitive fine arts and film departments. And, uh, you know, you have to move or whatever to, to that county, uh, do that, or just take advantage of the opportunity that exists in your local school. Again, as I said earlier, get in those plays, uh, get in those classes, if it's a program, a track uh, that you can pursue. I think because of the impressive uh, level of instruction that I'm seeing uh, coming into a lot of programs around our state, that that would be you know, just an excellent, strong foundation for a lot of students. 
Thank you so much. And again, I want to encourage everybody to post your questions, your comments in, in the comment section. Uh, this is this is good. All the information that you, all of you are presenting on today, this is going to help our youth, especially in the black community, who, you know, who want to, you know, be the next Tyler Perry's, the next Spike Lee's or any in those career fields in the within the industry itself. Uh, and again, um, you uh, again, you are tuning into the Actors of Filmmakers discussion of the 2022 first annual Mentors of Performing Arts and Broadcasters Virtual Conference presented by Bird Sound Association of Broadcasting and Arts, where where I'm a motto is preparing today's youth as voices in arts and broadcasting. So I would just I just want to share uh, with with the audience, and um, so we're gonna continue on with this. Uh, our our moderator, she she's still trying to get on here. But um, I've been a communication worker, so hopefully in a few minutes she'll be able to uh, log on and so she could take over this discussion. Okay, we're going to go to the next question. The next question is, there are aspiring young actors and filmmakers who write, produce, and direct their own plays and productions, but don't know how to prepare themselves for auditions or have the resources available to them due to their environment, such as living in the inner cities. How can this how can this situation be addressed? And uh, Cassidy, I'm gonna let you go first with that question. Five minutes each for each panelist. Um, I think if you have those particular tools where you can, you're directing, you're writing, you're doing all of that, but you don't know the auditioning part, or that's like the bare bones of it. And when you don't have everything you may have to step back for a moment and go back and get it because essentially you really can't move on. You, you, you can't really be successful if you don't have that backing first. You have to know about the auditions and how to audition and how to go about it and how to present yourself because um, there'll be times, especially if you're an independent person, You'll be doing double duty. You're going to be doing casting calls and you're going to see the director sitting up in there and you're going to be doing double duty. So if you don't have that ability to say, this is what I'm looking for and to know what you're looking for and also know your story that you're trying to put out there, you're going to have a hard time dealing with auditions and you're going to have all these great people that come in and want to be a part, but you ain't going to know what to do with them. You're not going to know how to use them. So it's really important that you have that. That That is the bare bones of it. Um, if you remember when you went on auditions, what did you have to do? You had to study up. If they gave you a script ahead of time, you would be crazy to show up to this audition and have not at least read over this script nine times so you can at least get your emotions together when you walk in there because a lot of these when you walk in the door, they are cold scripts. You might read it, and sometimes you don't get the script until you get there. So you got to be prepared. So I, I'm I'm just trying to figure out. That's a weird question to me, because you 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 got to be prepared on the other side before you can go the other way. It don't work. It's sort of like all I can say if you slide by. You did it by, by, by prayer and the skin of your teeth. I, I, I don't know how that works, but you got to have that back and behind you. So if you don't have that particular tool, that's the most important tool. I, I don't think the other stuff, gonna, it's not going to stack. It's not going to stack right. But that's just my opinion. I'm just saying. <laughs> um uh thank thank you all uh our moderator is now on joining us uh ladies and gentlemen let us welcome the moderator for the actors of filmmakers discussion ava coleman she's joining us now hey ava Hi, Hi, Ava. Ava. Hi, Ava. So sincerely, how y'all all doing? I had studied each one of you guys. I sincerely apologize. Someone has has hacked into my Facebook account, mm. and. We are having difficulties with my husband's account as well. So we had quite a time with trying to uh, reestablish everything. I've set the reset the codes, but I'm still having apparently difficulty. So I sincerely apologize because I was really, really excited about meeting you guys and coming on and 
just at, uh, 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 giving you my expertise on my end about filming and acting. And so I don't even know where you guys are. I heard you talking about funding. And that was one of the things that I really wanted to elaborate on the most. So again, I apologize. And I am Ava Coleman, your moderator for today. And I want to thank you, Mr. James, for the invite. Amen. You, you're welcome, Ava. And uh, uh -huh. I and I totally do. Un I totally do understand, though. But Ooh. you've been in, you've been in, you've been in communication with me during the last uh -huh. half hour, and uh, and I did announce to uh, everybody and and the in the audience what was going on. So okay. uh, uh, the question I ask is, um, um, what can uh, there are aspiring young artists and filmmakers who write, produce, and direct their own plays and productions, but uh -huh. don't prepare themselves for auditions or have the resources available to them due to the environment such as living in the inner city. How can this be addressed? So what we're gonna do, Ava, uh, uh Cassidy just finished uh, uh sharing her thoughts, then with then um uh, um, Marcus is going to speak, then Cassandra and er er Eric, and after that, then I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay. 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 Uh, Mar Marcus, you, same question in five minutes. Yeah, I'll say, like, uh, Cassidy said, that is a difficult question to answer, but I guess to be on the positive side, if they have all those things into I it would be good to go back to the mentorship. So sometimes you may have ideas and you know you can't get everything, but you just don't have all the ingredients. So it's good uh -huh. to help you in this way. Okay, you got the groundwork. Now this is what you need to do. And once you said as mentioned, yeah, gotta have I show to and it make you look up it's always do your homework um if you make no then you to something and then um also make and put it you or you may act um, always important to look at the positive. Always scratch, mm. literally with scratch, and build upon and build upon to get to want to go. So we want budget man, funding, and you want the. Mm. It's important and to work with them and those who open other avenues. Person, but they save the line or they money on the line. If you do your work, active, space, you know. So, get that thing, it's what it guides you in the right direction. If you still. Thank, thank you so much, Marcus. Cassandra, same question, five minutes. Okay, and uh, hi, Ava, welcome, Ava. Hi. Likewise, I have actually issues. I'm traveling, uh, and, and so I, I want to apologize in advance. Now my battery is saying it doesn't have much, uh, so I, I just want to say all this in advance. <laughs> Cut off again. It's been a pleasure to be here with you all. But um, in answer to the question, um, I think you know it, it, it's just very critical for me as. I may be getting cut off any moment now. But yeah, I think it's it's very important to to take advantage of what is available in your community. Uh, it is important to be prepared when you go into those auditions as uh, both Marcus and Cassie have already mentioned that, you know, sometimes it's a cold read. So you want to be well trained, well prepared of what's available to you uh, in your area, you know, and be resourceful. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to get a group together, do some projects, uh, or get, get some friends together and uh, maybe train. That, that's something actually just came into my mind. But, you know, I would just say, you know, if you're in an area where you don't um, feel that there are a lot of resources available, be very creative. Of course, uh, there's so many resources online. Uh, that you can, mm -hmm. uh, can, can utilize, but uh, but yeah, I would just say be as resourceful as possible, but know that preparation is key, and so find some way uniquely 
creatively to get yourself prepared for when you're in front of those opportunities. Thank you I'm so ready. much, Cassandra. Thank you so much, Cassandra. Eric, same question, five minutes. Yeah, so for me, um, I became a master researcher. You know, mm -hmm. it, it, seeking the answer became my mission. You know, if I wanted to know something, I would first start at Google. <laughs> as simple as that. Do a Google search, whatever search engine you use. The most popular right now is Google. You know, pose these questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, seek out people in the industry. Uh, like Marcus mentioned, it goes back to mentorship. Uh -huh. For me, what I did uh, as a young up and coming actor is I sought out student films. So that's a very important resource because they're mm -hmm. always they they need actors and actresses to come on board and act out their their films and um, dare I say they're a bit less selective you know uh, mm -hmm. especially because you're not necessarily going to be getting paid now I've seen nowadays where they they are depending upon what level it is like I, I went to Full Sail uh, University for my digital cinematography degree. Mm. Um, and I saw where some of my fellow um, uh, classmates were paying actors, but I wouldn't look forward to that on a student film because really you're getting the benefit. It, it's experience and then like Marcus and, and everybody has been saying, Cassie and Cassandra, it's, it's not about the money or it shouldn't be. If it's really mm -hmm. in you and you're passionate about it, you know, this is something at the time that I would have done for free. And I'm not mm -hmm. advising that everyone who works deserves to get paid. Mm -hmm. But there is, like Cassie said, a period where you do have to pay your dues. You mm -hmm. know, if you really want to get there and achieve, you got to be willing to pay those dues. So, yes, um, for that individual that has been writing and, and, and you know, producing on an independent level, and is short on resources, reach out to the colleges, reach out to the schools and uh, get involved with um, um, those student films. You know, they're always auditioning and looking for talent. Mm -hmm. Correct. Oh, uh, James, I think you're muted. We can't hear you. Somebody disappeared too. Okay, I'm I'm here. Uh, uh, thank you so much, Eric, for uh, 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 and all of you that answered that question. Uh, since our panelist is on, uh, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, um, you know she's gonna take over. So, Ava, there's only two more questions uh, that's be presented, and I'm sure you already reviewed the uh, the instructions of what was was to be was to be taking place. Correct. Yes, sir. I have. Okay. Yeah. okay. Okay, perfect. Just give me a second, everybody, because I'm doing okay. two or three things at one time. And okay. again, I want to encourage all of you that's watching this, uh, this uh, the actors, if you make this discussion, please post your comments. Uh, please post your comments uh, because, like I said, this is going to help our black youth to uh, to go in, you know, to be successful in the industry. But at the same time, it's, they have to go through a learning and training and development growing process. Mm -hmm. they, mm -hmm. they just they just can't they just can't say, oh, I want to be the next Tyler Perry. Look at Tyler, Tyler Perry had to had to go through steps to get to where God blessed him to be at now. And now he's mm -hmm. a he, he's a he's a billionaire and uh, everything he has done. So 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 that's what our, our young people need. They need they need that tool and information that's gonna help them, you know, to get you know to get to uh to those levels. And education is very important. Our organization is about uh advocacy in the arts and the performing arts and broadcasting for for our youth. For our for our youth. Just give me a second, everybody. I'm about to pull up the questions. So, um, um, so again, I want to thank all of you and those who's watching right now uh, for taking the time out to help us with this, and especially the uh, the panelists for for this conference. Uh -huh. okay, just give me a second, everybody. Uh, Ava, uh, do you do you uh, do you have the questions in front of you? 
I do, sir. I do. Uh, okay. Uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, there's two more questions, and then we're going right. to go ahead and proceed with, the, with closing out. So the uh, so now you you in the hands of our, of our moderator. The last two okay. questions. All right. I'm back, folks. Again, I apologize, but uh, two other questions remaining. And uh, one is, our young people have access to social media these days to showcase their skills as musicians. But how important is social media as a tool in the 21st century? How important is social media important? And I want to, the first person I want to answer that question is Cassie. Um, her name is Cassie Hollis. Hey, Cassie, how are you? Uh, 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 Cassandra, uh, Cassandra, she was on here, but she's traveling right now, so mm -hmm. she, she's off. She's off. So you could you could continue. Okay, well, that Miss Cassie Ganey. I'm sorry, that wasn't her. I, I put the first name with the last name, but it's it's addressed to you, Miss Cassie Ganey. I apologize again. Okay, can y'all repeat that question again? Let me make sure I get that. Correctly. Yes, ma'am. It's related to our our young people having access to social media these days, and the question is, uh, uh, how me, important? Excuse me, excuse me Ava. Um, uh -huh. uh, it, it was supposed to say after the filmmakers, but that was a, that was a typo. It says musicians, but it's really after the filmmakers. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, our young people have access to social media to showcase their skills as active actors and filmmakers. How important is social media as a tool to the 21st century? Um, as an influencer, it's extremely important. Influence. It's mm -hmm. also, it, it has actually cut out um, several steps because mm -hmm. People can see you in real time. They see your content. You can go live and show your content, show your talent. Um, and if you're consistent with it, depending on what platform you are on, you okay. can make revenues from this. You can monetize. You can be monetized. Your um, and, and as an actor, there's a whole bunch of us sitting mm -hmm. back. Um, I'm on TikTok. Um, but I don't jump out there and say, oh, well, I'm this, this. no, you see it on my bio, but I'm mm -hmm. talk to have fun too. And, but it's also a way to see actors or beginning actors or people trying to get in the industry. You get to actually see their talent. Um, uh -huh. this social media thing, and it depends on what platform you are on. I think uh -huh. TikTok is probably the best platform for people who are trying to act, sing, dance, cook, whatever it is. Uh -huh. it, platform lets you create. It lets you explore. It doesn't micromanage you. Don't get me wrong. Facebook is great, but Facebook uh -huh. has so many stops and cut you off and slap you out the way they, they, they doing too much but mm -hmm. if you use the right platform mm -hmm. even if you're a fashionista mm -hmm. it's, a, it's why you have influencers now because they can get on here and showcase what they got going on they don't mm -hmm. have to go and sit into a they don't have to go to a casting call they don't mm -hmm. have to go to, uh uh you know these big auditions and waiting lines and you probably number 242 trying to audition okay. for this one part. You can just go up online and hit that live button and be like, boom, here it is. And your mm -hmm. audience is for people who are looking at you and going, oh. And then it's so many other people, including everybody from the industry, that you don't know who is watching you or who. I agree. Might I agree. Who can even go to YouTube and get discovered? Tyler Perry has found. More people on YouTube and Tyler, I'm waiting for you to find me underground. But anyway, I'm just saying. It's, it's <laughs> so it's extremely important. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Cassie, and I appreciate your answer. Uh, the same question is going to Marcus uh, Murphy. Okay. Yeah, I think social media really is um, like Cassie already making a great tune, but it's how uh -huh. you use your tool and how you connect to your audience. You know, if I'm a, in my age bracket and I know 
I'm geared to this particular audience and I want to expand upon or expand, then I need to make sure that I know my audience what they want to see. Because sometimes you could put out content, like an actor be doing work, just say you're working, but there's no true true meaning. And the benefit, I would say, with Instagram or TikTok, Twitter, mm -hmm. Facebook, is that each platform has something different. So on Twitter, you know, you might want to speak about your journey as an actor opposed to acting it out. Because sometimes reading things can resonate with the individual. But mm -hmm. on Instagram, you might want to show them the, the behind the scenes of what you're going through. The day of an actor, getting up at like 3, 4 in the morning, just before you even get to the set. They get, all, mm -hmm. they get all made up. So you want the um, connection with your audience to make sure that, yes, you might love my work. Yes, you might see what I do. But I want you to sh show you the human being side of me first so you can understand the process. Yes, um, yes, 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 yes. It so helps mm -hmm. with the content perspective of, you know, you could do a quick skit on Instagram and then that can transcend to something bigger be beyond what your mind is. So each platform is different. TikTok, um, I have a TikTok and I haven't done like all the challenges and things. My first time doing mm -hmm. that and I looked at so like serious because I didn't know, first I didn't know the dance moves, but then the girl that was dancing with me showed me how to do all the good stuff. <laughs> so each platform is different, but I see all that to say is that if you, if you use your one, your platform, your algorithms, and you connect. Because we can all do our individual things, but mm -hmm. connecting and um, collaborating with other people is also a good um, thing as well. A lot of people may not think they could do because they want to be on themselves or they may not want to be bigger than that person. So collaborating, mm -hmm. I, I always believe in that because um, they might bring something to the table that I may not even even thought about. Um, it is profitable, but again, it's kind of like acting. Why mm -hmm. you doing it for the money wise or are you doing it because you really want people to see okay. so I should have to say is have your platforms use your platforms but just make sure the end goal is really benefiting not only yourself for that moment but for mm -hmm. the looking at you as, you know, as a role model and then also mm -hmm. the generation behind you I mean I keep saying the same thing because it's, it's very um, important yes, sir. Uh -huh. <laughs> Very important to say that the tools and the foundations that we're given, the people that's in our age brackets, that's looking at, at us as mentors, that we give them the real. Because it's not always about the, the money or this quick 30 second or minute video, but just about the message. And like I said, film is forever. So even social media is forever, too. I mean, it might crash. Mm -hmm. But you just mm -hmm. want to in the real world. Like, if I come to Florida and I see Irk one time, he can say, okay, I, I don't know him personally, but, you know, <laughs> I, I was on a panel with him. So it's about your energy and people can really resonate with that um, and just make sure that um, you're having fun with what you do too because that's what it's about, the fun, because everything else is going to come. <laughs> that's true. And I do appreciate your uh, answer, Mr. Marcus uh, Murphy. Um, getting back to what uh, Cassie said regarding uh, social media, especially Facebook, and you guys, you're, I'm experiencing what you're speaking in reference to right now, you know, being locked out of my own page. I can't even get in. So um, it's important to have other aspects and other uh, other platform. And, and listen, there, there, there's a whole lot more than just the platform. Sometimes just verbally, just word of mouth. Word of mouth. And I'm a radio show host as well as a television show host. So it's easier for some than it is for others. But if I get your content or if I get some information from you, all you got to do is make sure you just tell it to me and I'll make sure that the audience hears it and make sure that they relay that they have heard it to you through my broadcast. Amen. 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 Same question to you, Mr. Ben Dross. That's Mr. <laughs> Eric Ben Dross. I definitely read about you, sir. So the same <laughs> question is directed towards you. Yes, uh, thank you, Ava. You're uh, very welcome. We're, we're so glad you're you're on with us. Thank you so much. So I feel like social media is essential. It um, is. One of the main reasons is you get to show your personality. You know, mm -hmm. you know mentioned about energy. Mm. And a lot of casting directors, they will decide, I mean, talent is great. You got to have the talent. Mm -hmm. how, many time has, how many times has it come down to whether, am I going to be able to work with this person? You know, how mm -hmm. often? Yeah. And, you know, yeah. about 
you know, yeah. people can kind of fake it till you make it on social media. You know, it's not <laughs> always real. Yeah. But it is an opportunity <laughs> for you to be real, to yeah. show your authentic self to people. Mm -hmm. And that brings you closer, right? Uh, you know, with the audition, a lot of times, especially if you're doing like an eco cast or, or you're doing um, where you're submitting electronically, most mm -hmm. of these casting directors are asking for a slate. And of course, that's not just for finding out your name, but they also want to see your personality. So now with social mm -hmm. media, you're able to bring that to them right. I mean, it's right there, you know, and you get to show off your brand, you know, what, mm -hmm. your, what your beliefs are. So that's another thing. You got to be careful, too, of what you're putting out there, because once it's out there, even that's if it, you believe it. it later on, it's out there. Mm -hmm. you know, um, people mm -hmm. can obtain it and they can reshare, repost it. So mm -hmm. that's another thing. While social media is a great thing, and it, like I say, it is essential, also be cognizant of what you're putting out there. And that's true. That is so true, sir. That is so, so true. And we do appreciate your uh, answer, Mr. Bendros. But yet we have one other question. So let us reflect on college now and how important for our aspiring young actors and filmmakers to attend college following high school to advance their skills. Should they attend college to obtain hands-on experience? I'm going to direct that to you, Mr. Marcus. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I will always say, you know, high education is the way to go. Even if not mm -hmm. on campus, having a trade. And I only say that the college is, like I say, go to school because you get to meet so many different people. It's kind of like your first introduction to, like, the audition and, like, mm -hmm. early on public speaking. You get to learn how to speak to different people in different classes, different podium, different spaces. So if you can master that in a four year or even a year, if you did four years, uh -huh. it, it's the confidence to go out in the world. Cause you still do your training now, but uh -huh. it gives you that avenue to know, like, okay, I could do this. Um also having an education sometimes because we are in a a fickle business where sometimes your career could be going good at one time and then you might mm -hmm. have a moment where it may not be going mm -hmm. good. You don't know what's next. And mm -hmm. then you don't have a, a savings in place or money in general. And then mm -hmm. you, and you scratch your head. So having that education as a as a as a backup is essential because even if you get like a McDonald's job or a nine to five, it allows mm -hmm. Money coming in to still invest in your craft. So when the opportunity does resurface itself, you don't mm -hmm too long but then we also know college isn't for everybody so i said right. trade or steal because you always need a handyman to come to your house if you're in a house and you don't pay that two three thousand i can get bro man like three hundred dollars so it's just still ways to have money in your pocket <laughs> yeah <laughs> to advance your career yep. but and but then if you don't want to go to school or you get a trade you know and you were doing really good in high school you never know a, a, a drama teacher or a teacher might recommend you to go to an acting school that can even further that's what after me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, so it's different ways but i will always say have a background i can say that i can say that because when i went to school in ohio and i had booked my first print job i made some good money and i told my mom okay i'm dropping out of school and she was like well wow I, I thought of that too, and um, and 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 I didn't do it right away. But what mm. they did say to me was, you know, acting and entertainment will always be there, but have something to fall back on because if you don't, then you might not, might not, you might not be fulfilled. And um, I'm glad mm -hmm. it's like 18, 17, 18, because um, now it, it makes a lot of sense later on. But at the time, I was like, no, I want the money, and this is the time now. But I listen, so I got my education, and I'm happy with with where things are. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful answer, Mr. Murphy. And I am still in school as we speak today. I, application, you can never stop learning. You can never That's not right. get enough education. Correct? Nope. correct. Same question addressed to you, Miss Cassie. <laughs> Would you like me to read that question again? <laughs> yes, please, please. All right, so we're saying let us reflect on college. And how important for our aspiring young actors and filmmakers to attend college following high school to advance their skills? And should they attend college to obtain hands-on experience? Well, 
let me say this. It's mm -hmm. always good school if that is your desire to go. Uh -huh. um, like Marcus said, there are some people that college just may not be for them. Mm -hmm. um, I would say go and study. If, if, if your goal is to be an actor or somewhere in that performing arts field, go to a school that is going to benefit you. But you also need some other avenues because you need a job. Yeah. You are going to need a job in this mm -hmm. business. You need to learn that you need to have several streams of incomes coming in because mm -hmm. you get an acting gig and let's, you know, look, you don't get paid every two weeks or come on. Mm -hmm. That that film got to be finished, and then it's got to go through editing. It got to go through the box office before you even yeah. see a check, unless you Tom Cruise or Will Smith, uh, with, <laughs> the, with the rest of us. Okay, so uh -huh. I would say always have a job. I mean, I have two special. Yes, I, I have two doctorate degrees. I have one in performing arts, musical theater, and I have one in environmental. Um, sign. So I'm some. I'm a civil engineer. Okay. But you got to have something to fall back on, and you have to keep studying and studying. Yeah. And studying. Yeah. There's always different forms of acting. Go to school. If it's not for you, then find some classes that's going to benefit you. But that ultimate thing, you need to have something to fall back on. And a lot of times we go to college because I, I don't. I don't want people to feel as though is this you go to college because everybody your parents want you to go because you're the first one out the family mm -hmm. or this. but a lot of us go to college and don't have the job that we went to college oh. for yeah and you gotta think you gotta think about that mm -hmm. uh, I still do consultant work for MITRE but my main job Segment producer all day, every day, all the time. Thank mm -hmm. God for that. Thank yeah. God for who I work for so I can keep that going. Mm -hmm. But if I that, you still need to have some other things coming in. So you have to decide, is college mm -hmm. going to be right for you? The biggest thing is get that high school diploma. or that Because mm -hmm. even mm -hmm. if you don't go to college, you still he get a job. On the head, huh? <laughs> you still get you still get a job. There ain't no if uh -huh. and you still can get a job. And no never mm -hmm. because you got a GED. Oh, you, you can't go come, there. You can't come on work now. In come you on now. I'm about to go there. That's a lie. Ah, That's a lie. Yeah. Never is a lie. You you can come work on. with come, work on with come, on like come on now. Come on now. Do what you need to do. Keep a job. Mm -hmm. Always keep a job. They say starving artists. I don't know what people, I think when people see us, they go, oh, they got all this money. But you don't know how we got it. Uh, when you get that one big paycheck, don't go to Louis, Louis Vuitton. That's your whole thing. Right? Don't do that. You have to learn how to manage your money. You got to uh -huh. learn how to put some money up. And you got to learn how to keep the project coming back to back to back to back. And if ain't coming back to back, you better have a job if you already working that can give you some kind of money, some kind of income, you know, roof over your head. You need the bare necessities. This ain't no hard, this ain't no easy job to, to try. It's to, not. It's, it's, you do this job, then you got, it's, I don't think people understand. Let me, let me, let me make it plain. When you have like a regular nine to five job, it's a mm -hmm. job. Okay. Yeah. You never, I mean, however long you want to be, when you're in the entertainment world, you finish one project. Now you got the audition no, for another. No, no. Cause if not, in between, oh, you ain't working unless you got another job somewhere. But you ain't even mm -hmm. work. You got to have something in between. So I if agree. school is where it needs to be, go to school and get what you need to get. If you know for sure that mm -hmm. after you get the school. Go to Brevard, go to Juliet, try to get into some of these mm -hmm. and get your mm -hmm. home. So when you come out, mm -hmm. somebody is looking at you and say, come on, let's do this. But in the meantime, in the meantime you have a job somewhere doing something. 
Wonderful. That's a wonderful, wonderful answer, Cassie. Also, let me reflect on, I was always told as a young person coming up to have multiple streams of income coming exactly. in. If you can. But let me go back to I'm what you said. I'm a little bit of everything and I still come on, come on, come on. Do you know that there are multi-millionaires right now that only graduated high school and some of them didn't graduate, they got the GED. I, take for instance these basketball stars. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Some I think one was LeBron James, if I'm not mistaken. I think he had something to do in that area too. Now, not to get away from what we're discussing, but uh uh it's very important to have those multiple streams. And and somebody said something about after you finish one, but I was I was always told try to while you're in that position as, of working for one person, try to make sure you have something. Don't quit a job. Don't quit right. a job until you get a job. Always have Will something you, else lurking. Job. Like, but, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm trying to say. Have something coming. Yeah. Correct. 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 You're gonna work mm -hmm. harder to keep. You're gonna work harder to you stay are. a millionaire. Mm -hmm. At, at mm -hmm. 23, I did one photo shoot, and that blew okay. my income up. Ever mm. since that day, mm -hmm. keep working. I ain't missing okay. no money at all. But I'm just being real with you. But I thank God mm -hmm. that I'm in a position of a job that I love to do. That I'm blessed to do. But okay. if you ever make that status, you got to work hard to keep mm -hmm. that. You don't just become a millionaire and be like, oh, I'm good now. I'm going to get you know, relaxed. You know, <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's the truth. That is so true. Wonderful answer, uh, Carrie. Uh, now to Mr. Bendros. Same question to you. Would you also like me to repeat the question or you got it from here? I believe I got it. So okay. higher learning um, is essential. I, I mm -hmm. believe that. And, but if you look at my life, you mm -hmm. wouldn't know that. And I'll, 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 I'll expound on that. So when I was in school as a youngster, um, mm -hmm. I just knew all it took was for me to get in front of the right person and sing my mm -hmm. heart. I was going to make it. You know, Marcus, Cassie, y'all talked about having something to fall back on. My my mother instilled in me, Eric. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she even um, introduced me to one of her musician friends who he had been gigging and doing everything, working hard. And it, she said, it's not an easy road. Have something to fall back on. Mm -hmm. so what I did was is uh, I went to, to school for, I said, you know what? Well, my mom says, have something to fall back on. Went to school for culinary. Okay. Um, you know, and I got my associate's degree. But uh -huh. I always felt like I needed that bachelor's degree. You know, certain doors weren't open unless you, it wasn't even nothing to talk about unless you had a bachelor's degree at the very least. Hmm. Now, uh, so uh -huh. fast forward over 20 years later, I said, because I didn't want to be told no anymore after an audition, I want to start producing my own films. Mm. Um, I went to school for digital cinematography. Okay. So it was late. I uh, went to Full Sail University, got my bachelor's in digital cinematography. I, I have award winning films, short films now. Uh, they, you know, I want to go telly. And I achieved all that because of that decision to say, look, it's not too late. I'm uh -huh. in my late 30s and my 40s. Uh -huh. and start. All you got to do is start and, and, you know, have that, that grit, that determination, you know, because it's going to be worth it. I promise you. Uh, so, yeah, I'm a proponent of higher learning, getting that college education. As we've said here, um, college isn't for everyone, but I did the whole trade school. I mean, it, it was a, a degree program, mm -hmm. but if college isn't for you, get a trade, you mm -hmm. know, some formal training. It is essential because nobody wants to live in lack and in poverty. 
Nobody wants that. And you're not going to be any help to anybody else if you mm -hmm. mm. That's what education does. Mm. Well, I appreciate your answer as well, Mr. Bendros. But as we're coming to the close of it, uh, I want to thank each and every one of you guys for for participating. And I also want to thank Mr. Uh, James um, for inviting me to be your moderator. Uh, but I'm going to give each one of you guys two minutes to uh, to uh, elaborate on your closing. Uh, you got two minutes for me. And I just want to give God the glory, the honor, and the praise, amen, for finally getting on. I enjoyed it. I'm going to take everything that I learned from you guys, and I'm going to affiliate with what I know. And I will be reaching out to you guys uh, even after this for something else that I'm doing. I am also a movie writer. I have a film. I'm a, a, a playwright. I have a play uh, that has won awards, and I have a new movie that's coming out. Hey. I have a small cast. Come on, somebody. Go ahead. You go ahead. Yeah, you go ahead. I'm, 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 I know I'm tired, I'm tired just to move over just a little bit. Just kind of sit get a little bit of that. Just can I get? But you know, I'm taking all of your advice, and I'm a, I'm definitely going to seek out everything. And I'm and not on. I'm a recording artist, right? And I'm traveling, but I can't even share with you guys what's actually going on and how the Lord is truly blessed because I'm locked out of my page. Okay. But anyway, to make the long story short, I truly appreciate moderating you guys today. And you, each of you have two month, two minutes to elaborate on the closing. All right. Beginning with you, Miss Kathy. <laughs> we like Kathy. <laughs> hey, this has been amazing. I, I'm hoping and I pray that people who are listening have uh -huh gotten a great experience and have mm. taken some of the things that we have offered to you and said to you through our own experience. I hope uh, that okay. you take it and apply it to some of the things that you feel as though that's going to work for you or that may open a door for you and understand yeah. that the first and foremost is, and, and I'm being technical, is that one, it's a gift to act because people want to say talent. Uh -huh. talent Talent is good. But I think to be a really good actor, you have to be gifted. It is something that God it's has to let you from it. Yeah. Or what you do. Even to even if you want to be a comedian, it is mm -hmm. a gift to get up on stage and express the terrible things you went through and put it in a, a comedic type Come of on. way, but have the audience mm -hmm. to resonate what's going on with you and they can they can understand. It's, it's a uh -huh. gift on the day, whether it's music, speaking, whatever it is. If that, that's your gift, God yeah. said pursue it. If he gave it to you, uh -huh. pursue it. Don't let nobody stop you. Keep going. You know you're going to hear some doors slam in your face. <laughs> Brush yourself off. Yeah. I've done it. God, and I'm just okay. being honest. I've done it. Mm -hmm. I've, I've been to a, I was a white audition and I went up and then spoke black and I spoke white and I spoke Chinese and I spoke African come on, come I need on. to speak. <laughs> Who wasn't going to throw me out? <laughs> come on now. Come on. I, I, I certainly can reflect on that. Certainly can reflect on that. Oh, the, the thing is to stay consistent. I heard the word consistent. To stay consistent. consistent. Instead, instead of or in spite of what the outcomes that are, are, are the challenges that's coming against you, that's when you know it's going to be successful the most. Because the bigger the battle, I'm going there, I'm about to break it down. Uh, the bigger the battle, the bigger the victory. Okay? The bigger the battle, the bigger the victory. <laughs> okay, Mr. Murphy. You know Mr. Murphy. You're going to have some days. You're gonna have some days where you're gonna have that. You're gonna have it. That's uh -huh. okay. Don't let it Just get you overcome down. it, and don't let it get the best of it. Don't let it stop you. That's it. Let's don't stop let it stop. It. it may delay. It. it may delay it, but it's not denied. But well, here's the thing. thing: all you need mm -hmm. is one. Year. All you That's need it. is one. Year. That's, That's it. it. That's it. So That's, ooh, I'm Jesus, grateful that, that you all had me to be a part of this um uh, conference. Um, mm -hmm. I hope do more, Mr. Birdsong. Mm -hmm. This is really great. And our people need mm -hmm. to know these things. 
Uh-huh. And saying that, yes, it's going to be hard because any job is hard. You're going to uh-huh. go through some that you're just gonna go through some stuff, and yeah. if it's something you really want, you gotta look at it as in terms of okay, I'm working for my family. Mm-hmm. My stuff is let like, even though neither one of my sons are probably gonna act. I have a son that's in music. Mm-hmm. No, he ain't acting. No, he watch. He's a football mm-hmm. player. But mm-hmm. my grandkids, if I ever had any, because I don't have none mm-hmm. yet, <laughs> make me look at grandma one day and be like. Well, I, think I want to do. I want to do what Grandma do, and maybe Grandma it'll be a, a, a little bit easier for you to walk up in mm-hmm. there and not have to prove to the big boys that you can come up in there and be a segment producer for a big company. That you mm-hmm. can come do your job just like anybody else and be the goat at it. Come on, that's All it. Right. That's it. Everybody, you are so welcome. You are so welcome. I will hit you back up, Mr. Murphy. Oh yeah, I just want to say first, thank you all for the opportunity (laughs) to be able to speak um, to our youth and just the people in general that's embarking on this journey. Uh Um, Anyway, because it's not easy. But all I really have to say is, you know, life is a journey. It's not a marathon. It's not a race. So wherever you see fit for your journey for your marathon, just stay focused on it. Have faith in all that you do because faith is yeah. worth it. And and know what you bring to the table. I think oftentimes we get so caught up worrying about what that person is doing or what that person is doing. It derails our journey and the ups, the downs, and in between. But if you just know what you bring to the table, and like as you said, you know, talent and like all that kind of things, talent is good, but. Sometimes your courage and, and your energy can overshadow a person mm-hmm. gifted. So and I and I know that for you know for my own experiences. But um all I have to say you say, you know, keep doing the work and, and have fun at what you do because it, it is a job. And of course, some days may be better than others, or it is a sacrifice too in your career. Yeah. Yeah. But this weekend I want to do some stuff, but I gotta be on set and things. But just know, like you got to feed the family. You got to make sure that rent paid up for good shit. Come on. Yeah. Up, you might not be inside. It's cold outside. Yeah. So yeah. Just know. Just know that what's for you is for you. And I know oftentimes we hear that a lot and it sound cliche, but it's very true. And, and, I, and It I, is I, true. You know, and it's a quote that I, I live by about um, Aristotle. We, mm-hmm. are, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then it's not an act, but it's a habit. Um, that's one of my quotes I live by every day. Um, good, bad, or indifferent. So, thank you guys. You are so welcome. Thank you for your uh remarks. And the last one is you, Mr. Ben Dross. Mr. Ben yeah, Dross, yeah. I love that name. <laughs> Come on, something about your name, sir. I just want you to elaborate. You got two minutes. Keep in mind, guys, it's two minutes for each for each one, and then we're gonna turn it over to Mr. James Burt Song Jr. Okay. So, yes, I, I, I thank you all for having me on this panel. It has been a blessing. It is always an honor to speak to our youth. Um, mm-hmm. They are the ones who are the future. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I thank you, Dr. Bird's song, Dr. James Bird's song, Ava, mm-hmm. uh, Dr. Cassie, Marcus. It's great to be on this panel. I know I'm in great company. So what I would say is think about, so we think a lot about ourselves, right? We think a lot mm-hmm. of ourselves, or you should, you know, put your best foot forward, oh. grind, you know, but also think about what you contribute to this world. Huh. You know, oh. That may sound cliche, but it's about your contribution because think about if people can get things from you that they can't get from anybody else, you're going to uh-huh. be in the end you are going to be in high demand. So think about your contribution. What do you, how do you make this world better? Come on. Focus mm. on making this world a better place and you're going to be all right. Okay. Okay. I like that. Love it. Thank you, each and every one of you guys. Look forward to me reaching out to you. And now we're going to place it into the hands of Mr. James Birdsong, Julia. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ava. Um, on, on behalf of the 
administration of board members of Birdsong Association of Broadcasting at RBABA. I would first like to thank uh, our moderator, Ava Coleman, for moderating. Thank you. Welcome. 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 The, the actors and filmmakers discussion. Bye, and, Adam. And I also would like to thank our, our distinguished panelists, uh, Eric Bendros, uh, Cassie Gandy, Cassandra Hollins, and Marcus Murphy for taking the time out to help us to present the after so filmmakers discussion of this of this conference. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm pleased to announce that this conference will continue. I'm asking everybody to, uh, that's watching to please post your comments. Uh, please join us again tonight at six from six to seven p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the artist and vocalist discussion. Oh we'll be, yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. uh, we'll be doing the artist and vocalist discussion, and uh, Park Stewart was going to moderate that, but emergency came up for him. So, so, um, so uh, Edward Armstead the third, he will be uh, taking his place as the okay. moderator for Park Stewart uh, because he uh, he just informed me this about an hour ago. But the panelists for the artist and vocal discussion are two uh, veterans in the, in the industry. That that is Avery Drake on Bobby Jones Gospel. Oh, Avery, okay. I'm about to list the F. Okay. Okay. Yeah. El Bridger will be joining us. Along with Grammy Award nominee Vanessa Mitchell, who was a member of oh. the uh, Motel uh, uh, team group in the 70s called High Energy. So, okay. Um, so, um, Everett, uh, Everett Drake and Vanessa Mitchell will be joining us tonight from 6 to 7 p.m. for the Artists of Vocals discussion. Then from, uh -huh. 8, then from 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern Time to Time, ladies and gentlemen, we will have the Songwriters discussion, which will be moderated by CD Broadcast. She is based out of the Bahamas. She's a, mm -hmm. an award winning uh, artist. This songwriter and uh, and we'll be joined for that discussion by Edward Armstead III and Marcel Butler, who is the creative director of the Atlanta office of BMI Music. So okay. I ask everybody to please, please come back to join us for 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the 2022 first annual Mentors of Performing Arts and Broadcasters Virtual Conference for the Artists and Vocalists discussion from 6 to 7 p.m. this evening, then followed by songwriters from 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then on Friday, uh, on Friday, October 13th from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we will have Managing and Marketing a uh, discussion. And that'll be moderated by um, uh, Deborah, Deborah Bryant, and the mod and the panelists will be will be um, Wanda Adams, the Reverend Dr. Jerome Bell, the former manager of Tremaine Hawkins, but Nita Bellamy Kelly. She's nationally known in the industry over the United States. And my publisher, Shilanda McIntosh. And then Saturday, uh, we will have other discussions. And then uh, next week, uh, we will uh, conclude it with the 20th, 21st, and 22nd. So if you go on www.babaonline.org slash mentors conference, you will see the schedule of all the discussions panelists and moderators. So again, I would like to thank everybody for tuning in today. Uh, I will, we will be back on here at 6 p.m. tonight. Okay. And from 8 to 9 for songwriters. And I'm gonna I'm gonna ask the I'm gonna ask the moder uh, our moderator and uh panelists to, uh, to be on standby after we finish this live. So again ladies and gentlemen please post your comments uh and you can come back and watch the replay of this please share this with 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 those especially our black youth because they are the future leaders and dreamers of tomorrow. Here at Bird Song Association of Broadcasting the Arts, where our motto is preparing today's youth as voices of arts of broadcasting. And again, visit www.babaonline.org to learn more about our organization, our programs, mm -hmm. our partnerships we're going to do with the HBCUs, and much more. God bless you. Thank you so God much. God bless you too. And we will see you in the next discussion. Bye bye for now. Bye bye. I need you all bye to stay. Bye, y'all. Okay. <laughs> oh, what's your Instagram? What's your Instagram?